So what we're doing today is changing the sprockets on a Triumph Sprint 1050 ST. Uh, changing sprockets is the type of job everybody should be able to know how to do. It uh, can be a little time consuming, but not really technical. Uh, if you have the right tools, it makes things a whole lot easier to do. So I've already removed the uh, front sprocket cover in the case of this bike, and I don't think I will need to remove the chain guard, although the factory service manual says I should remove the chain guard. I don't see that it's going to cause me any grief as far as clearance goes, so I'm not too worried about it. So the first step anytime you go to remove your, uh, your sprockets is to loosen the transmission output shaft uh, nut. This, uh, this nut, uh, and I, I already got it loose, but um, I'll walk you through how I actually did that. Um, the reason I say that's the first step, before you do anything else, before you slack in your chain, before you uh, uh, take your chain off or do your rear, you know, loosen off your rear sprocket, the reason you do this one first is because you need the tension on the chain and on the sprocket so that you can, you can hold this shaft in place so that you can unthread the nut. Uh, this nut that's on here is uh, a, a, a standard uh, right hand thread so we're going to turn it counterclockwise to take it off. Uh, it did have this, uh, this collar uh, washer that, uh, that bends down on a tab to lock the nut in place. So in order to get that up, I used a screwdriver just to get underneath it, pry it up a little bit, then used pry bar tool, a hammer to get it up in place, and then finally uh, just a flat punch to get it as flat as possible in order to do that. Now one of the uh, most difficult things to do is to get this nut off on any bike uh, when it comes to changing sprockets. Um, there's a couple of little tricks that you can use. Obviously you need to have the right size socket in order to get on that bolt, uh, on that nut I should say. Um, a breaker bar is pretty important as well to make sure that you have enough uh, leverage. But these don't work really well when it comes to this type of application. Um, there's a couple things that you can do if you don't have access to uh, um, an impact gun, which is the best tool to use uh, when it comes to, 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 to doing this. Um, an impact gun uh, provides the, the proper amount of torque on the, on the nut, and that ratcheting effect as the uh, pneumatics uh, kick in, just that, that sort of vibration as it takes the nut off, uh, loosens it and spins it. If you don't have that, you're probably going to need a friend to get on the uh, uh, the brake, the rear brake, and hold that down as much as possible. Um, having the bike on the ground, uh, if possible, uh, it's, I mean, it's with the center stand on these bikes, the rear tire is in the air. There's not much you can do about it, but you could have a friend sit on the bike so that would position the rear tire down, their extra weight on the tire, and holding the rear brake and the bike being in gear. Um, you might be able to break it loose with the pry bar, but uh, an impact gun. If you can't, uh, if you don't have the access to a pneumatic one, a uh, professional one, uh, get an electric one. Uh, they're better than nothing, and uh, will save you a whole ton of uh, grief when it comes to doing jobs like this. And uh, they pay for themselves. Impact guns have come down. Pneumatic ones have come down in price so much. Um, because of the advancements in electric ones. So we'll take that off and hold those up. That's what the uh, the washer looks like and the nut. And these nuts have a they're directional. That's the inside, the side that faces the shaft. And that's the outside. So we'll set those aside. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is slack in the chain. And to do that, we are going to um, release the tension on the um, 
axle uh, to allow it to slide forward and we're going to use our uh, chain tensioning spanner uh, on the back in order to, to move that. So, this one is 17 millimeters. I'm going to grab my 17 millimeter socket and ratchet. loose. On all of these uh, uh, single-sided swing arms, uh, in the case of, of uh, moving the, uh, the, the rear hub closer to the engine and putting more slack in the chain, uh, you have to use your span on, spanner uh, to um, uh, turn the, uh, the, the sprocket clockwise. So you think the clockwise would be tightening it, but that's not the case. You, you turn it clockwise and it loosens it and moves the hub further forward. So to move the uh, axle forward, uh, we're going to take our spanner and uh, put it on the adjuster nut for this eccentric that's in here that moves the axle. I'm going to find a slot where it locks up. And you can get on it. Can be a little tricky. And there we go. And we'll push that down. And what that does is it puts that slack in the chain that we need by moving the hub forward. All right, so we have our chain nice and loose. This is a brand new chain. I just put it on the bike uh, uh, probably about 100 kilometers ago. I uh, didn't, uh, didn't ride much with it. I had the new chain, so I put it on. Uh, I left it with a master link in it, just in case I needed to uh, take this chain apart afterwards. Um, but in this case, because this chain is brand new, uh, I'm gonna leave it in place, and I am only going to uh, to uh, uh, slide this chain off of the sprockets. Rather than disconnect the, ma the master link, I'm just gonna slide it off of the sprockets and uh, put that back into neutral. There we go. I'll be able to do that like so. There. Same thing with the front. The front sprocket now, because I've got the the nut off, will come right out. Come front sprocket removed. Now the reason that I'm changing these sprockets, um, they are a little worn, but the real reason is, is that uh, these sprockets were put on by the previous owner and uh, he dr dramatically changed the gearing on this bike. This bike stock has, uh, uh, what is it, a, an eight, a 1942, I think it is. Um, and uh, yeah, 1942. And uh, what he's put in place, and you see that there, is an 18, and then on the back he had a 40, 47, I want to say. There it is there. A 48. So, what that did is it made the, I mean, if you wanted your Triumph ST to wheelie, that's a good way to do it. Um, it just made the bike pull really, really hard. Uh, you know, the kind of gearing you'd have for, for quick acceleration. Uh, or pulling stumps out of the ground, I don't know. But uh, it, uh, it threw the speedometer out by a substantial amount, uh, about 15%. It, um, so it, you, the bike thought it was going a lot faster than it actually was. And, 
it made shifting gears almost pointless. Um, you know, cruising along uh, in sixth gear. You know, it, it, it was it was it made the top three gears almost useless uh, in the bike. You just automatically shift, short shifting up and and, and leaving that be. So let's uh, let's work at getting the rear sprocket off now, and uh, we'll get to that. I think I may have to loosen off these bolts here, which are for the sprocket cover. So, I'm going to swing that out of the way, the chain's out of the way, and we can take the, uh, the rear bolts off. I probably should have uh, uh, slackened these as well, but at least you'd have access to the back of these bolts on the rear sprocket of this bike. Uh, if you didn't have access to the, to the sprockets, um, uh, the bolts on the, that are hold the sprocket on on, the, on your bike, the uh, best thing to would have done is to leave, um, once you broke that nut free, is to leave everything in place, again using the, the, the engine t um, uh, compression, uh, leave the bike in gear, and that way you could have loosened off these nuts without fear of the wheel spinning. Uh, it's not as big a deal on the back one. Uh, it's a lot easier to control the wheel uh, just with your hand and things like that. So, But if it became an issue, that's one way to tackle it. Uh, I am going to use my impact gun again just to uh, make life easier on myself. Sprocket is off. Okay. So, like I said, it wasn't horrible, but uh, the gearing you know, was the real issue here. I'll uh, hang on to the sprocket set just in case I ever want to do tractor pulls with this bike or something like that. We have our new sprocket for the rear. Now most manuals recommend changing out uh, rear sprocket bolts, concerned about that. Um, I'm going to reuse the uh, sprocket bolts. The threads are all in good shape on all of them. Uh, they all came off easy. I am going to use a little bit of red Loctite though. Uh, sprocket uh, bolts, uh, just to make sure they stay in place. So. So there's two sides to this sprocket. Um, the uh, this side has the you make that out as a 12 slash 16 number. This side has the 42 on it. That's the uh, the number that we want facing outward. So it tells us the number of teeth on it. We don't have to count. So I'm going to put a couple of these in, get them started. Grab my red Loctite, and start tightening them up. And I'm just going to get them a little bit tight, and then we're going to go back and torque them the proper spec.
Okay, we've got the, uh, the back sprocket snugged up. We're just going to leave it right now and we'll come back and torque these afterwards. I'm going to put the front sprocket on first and get that set. So, we have our new front sprocket. Just wanted to see the difference between the old and the new. See how the teeth are shaped uh, and wore in to a point more so than the new sprocket on the old one. Um, just a little bit of a hook forming on the old sprocket. Not horrible, uh, but a new sprocket, much more efficient. And again, this one has the, the proper gearing. So we'll make sure we have our, our number out. Again, uh, this is a 19, this sprocket. Previous one was an 18. So this is going to give our bike more speed, allow us to use all the gears in it. And if for some reason I don't like it, I can always go back to those other sizes. Put the sprocket in the chain, slide the sprocket in place. Uh, I'm just going to put the nut on and just get it started. Um, because this has a lock washer on it, a locking washer, a mechanical one, uh, I am not going to apply any Loctite or anything like that to this, these threads. I am going to just flatten out that washer, make sure that it's easily usable again. Uh, the factory service manual says to replace this washer, of course. What I found is if you don't use that same area that was uh, bent over to hold the uh, uh, the edge of the nut right in place, uh, you can probably use it again. Just find a different position, use a different piece of the of the washer to uh, to bend over. Now to torque this front one down. Um, the front sprocket, in this case, is torqued to 132 newton meters. Uh, the rear sprockets are torqued to only 33 newton meters, so a substantial difference in the amount of torque that you need to supply, but you always need to use a torque wrench. There's absolutely no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, if you don't have a torque wrench, get one. So we're just going to tighten this up. I'm going to use the impact tool to uh, tighten up that front sprocket. Bikes in gear. There's a little bit of resistance. Okay, and now we can torque it. So we'll see if we can, we should be able to torque down the rear sprocket, being it's only 33 newton meters. Satisfied with that. Now we're going to torque that front one. One hundred and thirty-two newton meters. All right. Okay, with a little help, we uh, were able to get the front sprocket torqued accordingly. So now what we need to do is we need to bend uh, one of these tabs off the washer down flat onto the, one of the flat spots on the nut. So how do we do that? Use our 
chisel tool, pry bar tool, and a hammer. And I'm just gonna get it going. That's why the bending over goes. Flat punch to help this out. There you go. Bent over. So now you can see uh, what the finished product is going to look like underneath that sprocket cover. Sprockets torqued accordingly. Lock nut is in. Final things to do retention the chain and lock that rear hub down. Uh, the amount of tension that you should have in this uh, particular chain is uh, an inch to an inch and a half, I believe. We're going to use our spanner. This time we're going to turn uh, counterclockwise on the eccentric and put some tension in there. You want to have just enough slack in our chain to meet those requirements. So one of the tricks when it comes to tensioning this chain is to uh, Tighten up the pinch bolt, the axle pin, axle pinch bolt that's in the back here. That 17 millimeter one. Don't get it super tight. Just put a little bit of tension on it, and that'll um, put some drag on the hub, so it doesn't move around so much. Right? Let's check. Down. Okay, so I'm happy with the amount of slack that's in the chain. Tension that pinch bolt back down. Okay. So, all that's left to do is put the covers back on, and we've changed out our sprockets on our uh, Triumph Sprint ST1050. Uh, not too too, big, too difficult, but uh, uh, definitely something that uh, if you have a, a chain final drive bike, um, you're gonna wind up changing the chain and the sprocket at some point in time. So make sure you have a, a service manual, factory service manual. Look up the torque specs uh, on these bolts that go on the rear sprocket and also that big one that goes in the front. Uh, make sure that you have access to a good friend to give you a hand or an impact gun or both in some cases. Uh, make your life a whole lot easier. So give it a try. Good luck and ride safe.